It's a very special month for us in that uh, we've got a lot of birthdays, I know that. Two in particular, two in particular. Our Apostle's birthday is on the 7th of August. Lady Pamela's uh, birthday is on the 9th. I believe Pastor Lawson, Sister Liz, um, so many other people. Happy birthday in advance to everyone that's born in the month of August. Also, we're going to be telling you more about the golf outing. Yep, the golf outing is still in place. It's going to be taking place on the 6th, the 6th of August. We'll have more information for you. Someone will put that up on the screen. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you, Elder. Good to see you, Sister Bobo. Good to see everybody that I can see. I'm so glad. And we are in a campaign. We are in a campaign of building. We need your finances. We need our finances. We need to pool our money together. We have been asked to um, sow a seed of $1,000. I'm working on mine. I don't know about you. I'm going to pay mine. I've got to get mine together. I'm getting my ducks in a row, and I'm going to pay on mine because that's what I need to do, but I'm going to participate. I am participating. So we need everyone to pull, pull, to pull your resources together. You know how we do. We can make it happen. God has done it before and he will do it again. So I believe God. I believe God and I hope that you do too. And um, we promise we won't be long tonight, but we're just going to share a word with you. Don't forget um, COVID-19. If you have not been tested, I'm sure there are some other facilities where you can be tested. And it doesn't take that long, maybe 15 seconds. 15 seconds max that they will take the swab and you can be on your way. You can get your results back either via mail. It will come in the mail, but you can also uh, sign up online to get your results. Praise God. I, I received my test results back. They were negative. I give God glory. I give God praise. But there are some who tested positive, so we're going to keep them prayerful. Amen going to keep them prayerful and we're going to uh, just continue to to fight this battle this is just a, another battle that God gives his children and and whenever God tests us not that he sends uh, the plague or sends the, the 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 forces but he gives us the faith and the wherewithal to fight the fight we need to fight we don't need to fight all of them but he gives us the wherewithal to fight when, when we need to fight anyway um, COVID-19 testing also, also, if you have not, if you have not, um, uh, done the census, if you have not done the census, please, 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 ma'am, it is so important that you are counted in the census, regardless of where you live, regardless of where you are watching me from. If you're watching me in Illinois, there is a deadline. If you are watching me in Michigan, if you are watching me in Texas or Florida or California, please fill out the census. You can go online and fill it out, or if you've received one in the mail, please fill out the census. It is so important, especially to our communities of color, that we are counted in order for us to receive resources that are allocated to our communities. And we know nothing about it, nothing about services that are implemented in our community and are paid for by uh, us making ourselves known and making ourselves aware of the services that are available to the communities we live in. So make sure you fill out the census. Also, register to vote register to vote you have an opportunity to register to vote you also have an opportunity we don't know how long we're going to be hunkered down so you may want to order your mail-in ballot I, I, regardless of what they're saying about how election will may be rigged through mailing forget that it's not going to be rigged we're going to get our voices heard and we're going to change some stuff around in the government that's because of your vote your vote your voice your vote and your voice they count you count in your community. You are vital in your community. We have to be counted. Okay? Let's pray. Eternal God and our Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to come before your people, become before my sisters and my brother. 
God, I just love them so. I miss them so much, oh God. I pray that you cover them, that you take care of them, that you bless their going in and their coming out. Now bless this word, word on tonight, dear God, that we might receive from you a word of encouragement, a word of enlightenment, a word to go forth, God. Bless our apostle. Bless our leading lady, Lady Pamela. Bless Apostle Carl White. Bless them on their birth month, God. Let them have overflow blessings, God. Those that are born in the month of July, we say to God be the glory that you were able to celebrate another birthday. And we look forward to those that we will celebrate with in the month of August. Now, God, bless your word. Bless your word. I give you glory in advance, oh God that this word will prick the heart and will uh, uh, stir the faith of someone on tonight, God. I give you glory in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all. Let's go to the word. We're going to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. If you have your Bibles or if you have your electronic device, uh, read along with me. I've got two translations here tonight. And... It's about 10 after. We're not going to be long, as I said. But we're in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. And it reads like this. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 says this in King James. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. Verse 5 reads, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And we're going to hang our hat on verse number 4 that says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory. This is the Nike. It's spelled like Nike. But this is the Nike that overcometh the world, even our faith. New Living Translation, if I can give you that real quick. New Living, excuse me, translation reads this way. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve the victory through our faith. Is that wonderful? We achieve, we win. Because that Greek word Nike comes from, actually it comes from Greek mythology, but it's also a word that means victory. Uh, uh, she was known as a goddess that was over military and over athletic events. Nike was. That's where they got the word Nike from. But the word victory is what we want to express in our lesson on tonight. For every child of God, defeats the evil this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith tonight's lesson y'all don't don't mess with me i want to talk about some entanglements oh did she say entanglements yes i'm not talking about will and jada but we we too have some entanglements right we're not discussing Will and Jada. However, we do experience a type of entanglement. Y'all can shake your head yes if you want to. If you can bounce your uh, uh, electronic device, uh, device up and down or like the little Jeff does when you go, mm -hmm. been in some entanglements. For example, if, if we've got a lot, our young people, our young men especially, they play sports and they are involved in all sorts of sports. They're all, all around sportsmen. They are lettermen, okay? They play football, they play basketball. Some of them even have tried their hand at baseball. And many of them, the, the ones that we have at Victory, have gone on and been a part of a championship team, okay? And to all of our young men who are aspiring basketball players, even the little ones are playing basketball, football, and baseball. And this year, it's going to be a little bit different because of social distancing. Even the professional ball players are taking a step back because they've got some entanglements because of this pandemic, right? 
So they're taking a step back. They're doing something with their salaries to help enhance their communities, to help some single moms. I'm not mad at that. But they've taken a step back, a precautionary uh, step, in order to say, no, we've got too much close contact in football. We've got some close contact in basketball. We've got fans that are going to be in the stands. We're going to take a step back for a minute and take a retrospective look in this entanglement, even as a professional uh, sportsman, baseball, basketball, or football player. Even, even with our young men, they would be practicing around this time, getting ready to go back to school. But even if the team was a championship team, those, the team that um, Corey Jr. was on or the team that uh, Jaden was on or the team that um, Joshua was on, they were good ball players. They, I mean, they could play. They could, I mean, they went to state championships. Their parents traveled with them um, all over the state. They went to various schools. They kept their grades up. And, and they, they rooted, their parents rooted for their team, and they brought back championships. And those awards came back to their schools and hung them in the auditorium, or they hung their championships in the gymnasium. Perhaps you were on a championship team when you were in school or when you were in high school, or perhaps you're on a championship team now bowling. I know Minister Barron, uh, he and his wife like to bowl. But perhaps your team came up as a runner-up. Have you ever been a runner-up? I have. During the final seconds of the game, y'all remember the, the game between uh, the Spurs, was it the Spurs and the Miami Heat? In the last few seconds of the game, the team that was expected to win came up short. They got entangled, right? They came up sh short because they forgot how to execute the fundamentals. They forgot how to execute the fundamentals of the game. They came close to a victory, but they weren't the champions. They didn't conquer, okay? Marriage the same way. A successful marriage can get into some entanglements. As we've seen in the news, when we probably should have been studying our words, we were looking at Will and Jada, right? You don't have to answer. That's okay. But perhaps you and your spouse or you and your significant other, you and your friend have reached a milestone. You've reached a milestone in your marriage. Uh, those young married couples, uh, perhaps you've made a year, and that's a big accomplishment. Congratulations, you've made a year. Some folks didn't think you'd last that long because y'all would, would butt heads so much before you got married, but you've made it a year. Or perhaps you've made it seven years. Old wives' tales used to tell us when, we, when I got married, 30 some years ago, they would tell, well, baby, if you make it seven years, it's going to work. Ah, they still get on my nerves. Okay. But I'm still here. Okay. So you've made it a year. You've made it seven years. Perhaps you've made it 15 years in your marriage. Perhaps you've made it 25 years. Perhaps you didn't make it. But you say, it's a wrap. I'm not doing this. But someone, perhaps one of you in, in the marriage has picked up a few pounds. You, some, some of y'all got that uh, uh, Rona weight, coronavirus weight, where you got to stay in the house so you don't have anything to do but eat. You're baking, you're cooking full meals, you're not going out as much, you're not, you can't go to the gym, can't work out as much as you used to, so... Your husband's six-pack looks like a keg now, right? Or or my or, or or my hourglass looks more like the world. How the world turns It's round rather than an hourglass. But we're still here. We're still here, okay? And and things happen in marriages, though, beloved. Perhaps someone has appeared to have stepped outside of the marriage. And got into an entanglement. Nothing happened. That don't have to mean anything happened. Perhaps you you talked to the wrong person a little bit too long. Okay, that can happen. An entanglement doesn't have to be a big production. 
It can be innocent to one person, but all wrong, all wrong to somebody else, okay? And now there's static on the line. Now there's trust issues, right? Now there's, an, come on, say it with me, an entanglement. Mm -hmm. Now there's an entanglement. Perhaps your business has come into an entanglement. You, you, you had a great business going by the end of February of this year. I mean, you were like gangbusters. You had your products on the market. You were getting ready to open your store. Maybe you did open your store. Maybe you have already been in business and you're, you've got your sales online. Perhaps you were doing something. Uh, perhaps you were a stylist. Perhaps you were a barber. Perhaps you uh, sold clothes. Perhaps you were moving up in your job and you were going into management. Whatever the case may be, your entrepreneur entrepreneurial prowess had catapulted. Your business was getting ready to take off. You were ready to go global. You were ready to, to start uh, uh, investing in stocks on, the, uh, on Wall Street. You were ready to invest with the Dow Jones or the S&P 500. You were ready. And all of a sudden, a recession hits. Mm. Some entanglement has come. Riotous behavior has broken out. A pandemic has caused a ruckus. How, how can this thing, this, this pandemic, this plague that has inundated all of our lives, regardless of what we've gone through or, or what we were doing, whether it was our children playing sports, whether we were uh, uh, heading into managerial positions on our jobs, perhaps our businesses were getting ready to take off, we were being our healthiest, our marriage was good, and, and now, and we, we're still trying to hang on to those faithful clients that we had in our business. Our nation has been divided, has been uh, divided, and now here we are, eight months into the year, and six months of it was into a pandemic. Six months of the eight months we've been here, in the year of an open mouth. Six months of it, y'all. Can you believe that? Six months. We're going into the play. Don't get, don't get, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to leave you there. We're going into it. And all of these entanglements had me thinking earlier today, y'all. Had me thinking about the word of God. All of these entang entanglements had me thinking about what does that mean? When I thought about uh, Jaden and, and, and Duda and thought about Josh, how they played their games to a championship, they played hard. And that works the same way when you play hard, when you work hard, when you uh, love hard, when you do your business hard for success. You don't give up. You can't give up. You can't give up on that person that you said your vows to. You can't give up on that business that you birthed, that, that started out as a thought. You can't give up on that career move where you were scared. You were scared to even apply yourself to the position. And, and you had a little bit of doubt, but you tried it, right? You tried You didn't get tangled up here. But now that you can look and have a retrospective look at it, you see where the entanglement gets. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. So how the end of the game is a metaphor. How the end of the game for our young men that played basketball so good and how they played basketball so skillful and they had such promise for this next year, getting ready to go to high school and uh in their junior year and showing the little ones how to play. But guess what? Even as they played hard for their championship games, the same principle applies to marriage, it applies to business, and it applies to our Christian faith. You got to go hard. You got to go hard. You can't give up now. 
You can't throw your hands up now. You can't throw the towel in now. You got to go hard. I mean, like your life depended on it, right? When you go hard for your marriage, you want it to work. You want to make that milestone of 20, 25 years. You didn't just give up your life of singleness uh, to say, oh, I was married once. No, you, you got married for a reason. You didn't start a business and invest all your money when something, all your ideas into something to give up and say, oh, that's not going to work. I got entangled. I got tied up. No, pandemic came and put me out. Sometimes life happens, okay? Life happens. But the scripture tells us that whatsoever is born of God, are you hearing me? Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, okay? And this plague right here, I count it as the world. You're not going to get me. You're not going to get me Cause, cause, cause because Jesus died for me and overcame the world. I'm an overcomer because I'm a part of him. Okay. Marriages sometimes end in divorce. We know that. I get it. I get it. I'm not going to condemn you. Now I can't send you to hell for that. It happens. Some of us were, have been divorced. And the next time around, we got it right. We messed up the first time. Okay. Salute you. Welcome to life. Life happens. But sometimes divorce happens, and too often it's because one or both forget the fundamentals. Just like uh, Jaden and just like Duda and just like Josh did not forget the fundamentals of the game. That's why they were able to go to a championship. They forgot how to love in their marriage. They forgot the affection in their marriage. They forgot the concern that first brought them together. They forgot the play, huh? They forgot the play and got all tangled up in the game. You hear what I'm saying? Start the game all over. Let's say I want a do-over. Uh -uh, two out of three. That's a double or nothing, Okay. Because sometimes when we get tangled up and entangled in life, we forget about the fundamentals of God, what he tells us. Businesses sometimes fail. Sometimes because they, we, we're going into things that made them successful. We forgot about uh, good customer service. We forgot about producing a quality product. We forgot about honoring our word in business. If you don't have anything else in business, you've got to have a good word. You've got to have integrity in your business. Sometimes business runs its course. It happens. Sometimes business runs its course, beloved, and the entanglement will find you. But you can't give up. You got another idea on this side. Don't give up because you were destined and, and preordained to be an entrepreneur with prowess that says, I can think of something else or I can expand the thought that I had on this other business venture. But I'm not giving up. I'm more than a conqueror. There are three words in our scripture, and I'm going to leave you alone tonight, and we're going to pray. The first word that I want you, you to remember in, in verse number four, it says, For whatsoever is born, born where? Born again, born of the Spirit, not just a physical birth. That's where you have an advantage. You've got a spiritual birth, and you are born of the Spirit. You are born of God. God has, has blown uh, uh, the breath of life to you. He has blown pneuma, which, is, which means spirit, into you, and you have become a living soul and have become born again. So you have another opportunity not to get entangled. He's untangled you, huh? Jesus said it occurs through water and spirit. An outward sign of an inward change is the water. And the spirit is something on the inside that keeps telling me to go ahead. The birth puts us in the kingdom of God. Those who are born again into the kingdom are overcomers. We are victorious. We are the Nike. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next word that I want you to remember, of course, has got to be victory. Don't we like to win? 
Nobody likes to lose. Nobody likes to lose. If you watch the television, you think we're losing. Not so. We have the Nike. Why? Because the word tells us in that same, that same verse, you have overcome. Born, if you're born of God, you have overcome the world. You win. You don't have to wait till you get to the back of the book. You already know you won. And this is the victory. This is the victory. That's that Nike, N-I-K-E, Nike. Those born of God, we're going to face some conflicts. We're going to face some controversies. We're going to face some con confrontation, confrontations. Otherwise, how, how, how could you exercise? How could you gain your strength without faith? You, you know, build your spiritual muscles up. Hallelujah. We can either be conquered or we can be the conqueror. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But because we are born of God, because we are born of God, beloved, we belong to him. And he don't lose. He don't lose. I like to be on the winning team. I like to be on the championship team. I like to see uh, those cloud of witnesses mm -hmm. like those parents traveled with their sons to the various championship games. I know I've got some cloud of witnesses cheering me on. We have the resources to be victorious in our various contests, whether it's the contest of marriage, which takes work, it takes endurance, whether it's uh, uh, the contest of business, it takes work, it takes endurance, whether it's the contest of raising a family, or, or, or it might just be the two of you working on each other. I know y'all locked up in the house together. Don't kill each other. Don't do it. Start all over. Go over the fundamentals one more time. I know he irritates you. I know she get on your last nerve. Don't do it. Just look at her and say, okay, we're going to try it one more time. I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm not going to talk to you right now because I don't like you very much right now. But don't give up. Don't give up. And the last word, beloved, that I want to leave you with is the word of faith. To leave you the word of faith. Hallelujah. This is what we use to obtain that overcoming. Is what we use is, is courage in order to overcome. Okay? The word says that this is the victory that overcometh the world. And it says, even our faith. In other words, it's the faith, the faith we use. Faith is what we use in order to get the victory. Amen? Faith is what we use. It's what we've got to use, beloved. I'm reminded of scripture. Oh, you know, I got to go to the word on this. The word uh, reminds me of this particular scripture. It says, for, th for this is the love of God. I'm reading in verse 3. That we keep his commandments. We keep his law. We keep his statutes. We keep the fundamentals of the game, y'all. We keep the fundamentals. And the commandments are not grievous. Verse 4 is our text. It says, for whatever whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But I had to go over to verse number 14 because verse number 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, somebody say anything, According to his will, he hears us, okay? He hears us. If we ask anything, then if we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, I got to walk. I got to walk for a minute before I let you go. I got to walk for a minute. I got to walk this down. I got to walk this food down so I won't be, so I won't choke on it. Chapter 2, verse 4. And look what this says, beloved. This messed me up earlier. This messed me up. The word will mess you up. It might, I'm not going, it's not going to entangle you, but it will mess you up. It's going to mess with you. Chapter 2 of 2 Timothy. Look at what the word says. How the word will, will just boom, right in the face. It says, No man that warreth entangleth himself <laughs> with the affairs of this life 
that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. In other words, I'm not going to get wrapped up and tied up and tangled up with all of this entanglement in the world. Because I'm trying to please the one that called me to be a soldier. He called me to be a warrior. He called me to fight. And he gave me the tools to fight. Because he says if I ask for anything, he heard me. He heard me. He heard me. Then I'm going to leave you with Ephesians chapter 3. Can we go there? Can we go there real quick? I forgot my paper. So that's okay. I'm going to go to the word because I know that's I know what I know. Okay. Chapter 3. <clears throat> and it says, verse number 17. Let me go back to 12. In whom we have boldness <laughs> and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations. Our Lord of our or uh, uh, faint not at our trip my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith beloved I love y'all by faith yet ye be rooted and grounded in love don't lose heart and you may be able to comprehend with all the saints those great clouds of witnesses what is the breadth and the length and the depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Now unto him who is able <laughs> to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by, the, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let's pray. Blessed Father, Redeemer, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your undying love, O oh God. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that this word will come will not come back to you void, but God will accomplish that which, which uh, it pleases you because you are the one who has called us to be soldiers to endure in this fight because we are more than conquerors. We are as sheep before the slaughter, but we are more than conquerors. And right now, Holy Spirit, I call it done in the name of Jesus. I call those things that be not as though they were in the name of Jesus. I bless your people now, God, with this word. This pandemic has, has, has got to loose them that no, no hurt, no harm, no respiratory disease will come nigh them that will harm them. But God, you will cover them with your blood. You will cover them, oh God, with their faith when they grow weary, when they forget the fundamentals. You will remind them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, of the fundamentals of faith. Right now, Heavenly Father, enact their spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to remember your word, to, to, to enact their word, to, to not react to the circumstances that go on in this world, but know that, God, they are conquerors. They have overcome the world. Thank you for your word, God, that we reminds us in the name of Jesus that we are more than conquerors. Thank you, God, that this word permeates our very soul and to the marrow, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Heavenly Father, for learning your word, for having this word on our tongue and on our lips and on our heart, oh God, and in our belly, oh God, that stirs up the faith, God, that we need in order to endure in business, in order to endure in our marriage, in order to endure, oh God, in rearing our family, in order to endure God during a pandemic in 
the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Heavenly Father, for each one of these who have tuned in on today. We ask that you bless them mightily in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for our apostle. We pray, oh God, that you shower down blessings upon he and Lady Pamela in the name of Jesus. Bless their children in those states, dear God, that our uh, man considers hot spots. We cover them now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We cover Florida. We cover Texas. We cover New York, oh God. We cover Georgia, oh God. We cover California, oh God. We cover all parts in between, God, where our families are, are living and residing residing God in the name of Jesus. We cover Michigan, oh God, where we have extended members and extended families, oh God. We cover uh, Mother White, God, in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father, touch her in Jesus' name. Thank you for the sisters and the brothers. Thank you for these, thy people, oh God, in the name of Jesus that are listening to my voice, God, and are receiving this word by faith. And we believe this prayer, oh God, as one in Jesus' name. Don't forget, don't forget this coming first Sunday, Apostle White will be back with another magnificent and victorious word. Please tune in, tell your friends, share this message with your family. We pray that it will bless you. Don't forget also, we're sharing uh, in our golf outing, Miss Carl White Jr. Charity Golf Classic will be taking place August the 6th. We will have more information on Sunday about the Charity Golf Classic. Don't forget to fill out your census. Please share a seed offering on tonight. Don't forget our Apostle is on Love Offering. And if you will go to our website, wearevictory.org, and uh, plant a seed in uh, the offering tonight if this word has blessed you. Also, don't forget to pay your tithes and offering. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful day. I bless you with love and happiness.